Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and uh, welcome to another video in the continuation and we are trying to explore the storage services in the AWS. Uh, first of all, yes, we do have another uh, comment target. I love these comments, your feedback, your appreciation, can't, do, can't help myself. This is the my motivation. So for this video, we have just uh, 200 comment targets. So help me to achieve that as quickly as possible. And this brings smile on my face and I record videos with more enthusiasm and more often. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So in the previous video, we saw some theory. Obviously, we want to talk a little bit more on the theoretical side, but I thought it was too much gonna be get boring. So I want to introduce you with the hands-on in the this one. Although this exam doesn't require, but still I want to give you from my side. So what we'll do is let's spin up some things, uh, see the options which are available and then have some fun with it. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, one more thing I would like to mention. Uh, my account is actually really, really old and uh, it's been quite a while uh, that I'm not on the free tier. But what I want you to understand is you should not be afraid of paying some bills to it. I'm not and that's one of the reasons which actually exponentially increase my learning. I'm not asking you to pay anything. I'm not associated with AWS or anything, at least as of now. Uh, so if I go ahead and look on the billing and cost management, due to I give so much of demos and all of them, you'll see that I'm actually uh, paying, uh, remove this, I'm paying $3, $6 and all these things. I'm okay with it. And until unless you are okay with paying this much of amount or trying and exploring the things, probably you will not truly learn AWS. No, this is not a marketing or anything of that. I'm just telling you what's, is required to learn actually. Anyways, so let's go back and we want to explore, go ahead and in click on the EC2. This is where you actually explore all these things. Uh, first of all, we want to see that what all options are there when we go ahead and launch an instance and we simply work with that. Later on, we'll come on these images, AMI, catalogs and all these things, lifecycle management, just want to explore them, how they looks like. Let's go ahead and click on the launch instance and if I can shrink this a tiny bit more, that would be awesome. Looks good. Okay, uh, so launch an instance. Let's call this one as uh, learn storage. Okay, uh, you can add additional tags. You can go ahead and use images as well. I'll walk you through. There are so many AMIs available. Remember, we touched on this point, AMIs. Right now, I'll just use an Amazon Linux. You can go ahead and use Windows as well, but then you have to use RDP and all these to connect and all this. I don't want that. Uh, I'm actually going with this one uh, because I'm, I'm going to be using a T2 micro of the instance, which is freely available, free tier, but you can go ahead and use all of them. Now select uh, key pair, I don't want to do that because I'll be anyways deleting it, so I'll proceed with without this one. Network setting, right now we are not touching on the network uh, settings, we'll just go with the basic ones. Now let's go ahead and configure the storage. Now you understand what all these things are. So in here it says I'll spin up a 8 GB of the machine with the GP3, which now you remember is a general purpose, but you can go ahead and choose IOPS operation specialized as well. Now notice here they don't allow you now the cold storage. It's absolutely uh, not fun to work with them. So they don't even allow you this then. But yes, there are machines which actually can actually use them. But anyways, we'll just go with this one. And you can actually add a new volume. And if I go ahead and add a new volume, notice here it says new EBS volume. That's exactly what we want. When they say root volume, that's also an EBS volume. You can go ahead and choose that I want an EBS volume or I want a general purpose. You're just allowed to do so. Obviously, it's going to cost you money, but you can actually have more than one EBS volumes in one EC2 machine. Let's remove this for now. And let's go ahead and use the advanced. We don't need this advanced details, probably nothing fun for us as of now. This is where uh, termination protection, there are more options in it. We'll probably skip them. Okay, nothing of interest as of now for us. So let's go back. And this is the summary, which is we want. So now we understand a little bit more of how the volumes and everything's are being used. Let's launch this instance and see what happens. Uh, obviously this is usually a fast process. 79% is good. Previously, they didn't show any bar or something like what's happening and it was all. <laughs> you just guess, figure out. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the instances and see what's happening. So uh, we have this one being terminated. This one is still pending. Let's hit the refresh. Probably this one will be up and running. And we can just hit the minus icon on this. I don't want to see any terminated ones. And hit the refresh again. Okay, there we go. A little not so fun on the smaller screen, but you can see this one is up and running, so learning storage. 
Now, the fun thing is I can go into the EBS and I can click on the volumes and you'll notice that there is this volume and if you scroll this a little bit, there is no name for it, but this one is actually in use. So notice here, volume state in use. And this one is in the US East 1D. Let's see where our uh, EC2 machine is. So let's go on to instances and let's see where you are. And this one is in the US East 1D. That's exactly where you have to actually put this. Let's go ahead and try something more. Let's go ahead and click on the volume and let's create a volume. And let's see what this is. This is a general purpose. That sounds good. 100 GB is too much. I'll just go with the 10. And IOPS operation is fine. Throughput is fine. But notice here, once it says US East 1A, if I do that, I will not be allowed to attach this into my machine. But let's go ahead and do this 1D, which is where my EC2 machine is. Let's go ahead and try this in US East 1A. What happens when I go ahead and try this? This is where you learn. Snapshot summary, uh, nothing interested. Let's go ahead and create a volume. So I have this 10 GB of newly created. Let's go ahead and click on this. And what I want to do is I want to attach this. Notice here, attach volume. Nope, I'm not allowed to do so. I can do go ahead and create a snapshot of it. That means I can take a backup of it, but I'm not allowed to do so. Uh, the whole re reason for this is the region. This is in the US East 1A. Let's go in the instance and try to launch one more instance. And we'll call this one as, uh, I forgot where actually our machine was. Just a second, I'll go in here. This one is US 1A, uh, obviously. Let's go ahead and go to instance. Let's launch an instance. And let's just call this one as 1A so that I remember. I'll use the same things, the rest of the things is is same T2 micro key pair login. You have to use nothing. So I'll just go ahead and proceed without key pair login. Now in the network second settings, I actually can have my subnet uh, being preferred, but let's go ahead and have these. Let's go into advanced details. And there are options that you can specifically select where in what AZ you want to actually have this. Uh, this is uh, actually very much shrinked down. That's why a little bit difficult. Let's see where the network settings are. Keep your login, network se settings, subnet. And let's go ahead and edit this so that we can choose preference. I want not the subnet, I want the AZ to be controlled. And yes, there is a way how I can control it. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, subnet, no preferences. Okay, just give me a second. I'll see where this is. I need to make my screen enlarged. It was just right in front of me. Couldn't see that and it's just there in the subnet. Uh, so if I click, go ahead and click on the subnet, notice here at the very end, it says 1C, 1B. They keep on changing this UI so much. Anyways, we want to just go into the 1A. So this is my preferred. Now this machine will be spinning up in that AZ. Yes, you can control that. Uh, let's go ahead and launch this. Uh, that's all, that's all what we need. Let's launch this. Shouldn't take much of the time. It's usually fast. Let's go into the instance and hopefully we'll see this in no time. 1A, this is pending. We have nothing in this. There we go. Now it says uh, running. So let's go into the volumes that we have created. Let's go into volume. And if I go ahead and choose this 1A volume, this is the first one. Now notice here if I go ahead and click on action, I probably need to hit a refresh on this one so that, that it knows where you are. So this is my 10 GB, the first one. I can click on this. And in the action, now I can I can see the option of attach volume. And when you click on the attach volume, the only instance you will be seeing because I have this only one, this is the one, 1A one running. I can go ahead. This device will be mounted on slash dev SDF, but you can just go ahead and change them. This will just be mounting the device. You have to format it and make it a volume. So I can go ahead and attach the volume just like that. Uh, there we go, nice and easy. Now you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but I'll actually go ahead and show you something more. Now this is my 10, which I've created the volume. Let's go into back into the instances, select the 1A and let's go ahead and delete this. Uh, instance state, terminate the instance 
and yes, go ahead. Now notice here it says delete EBS. Associated resource may occur cost and all of that. So there is one A and what do you want to do the instance with the EBS? So there, this is where you can actually select what should happen to them, uh, but I'll just go ahead and terminate them. Okay, shutting down and hopefully it will be terminated within a few seconds. And a couple of more. Yeah, it, it takes some time. <laughs> what can I do? There we go. Hopefully, no, it's still terminating. Oh, terminated. Finally, no, it's still shutting down. They're just changing the position. Anyways, let's go into the volumes. And we should be able to see. Okay, now we have only two ones. This 10 GB didn't got deleted because I explicitly created it. Only the volumes which are created automatically with the instance, they only get deleted. So this one is still with me. Now this 8 GB one is actually something which we have, but I want to take a backup of it or copy of it. I can just select on it and I can take an action of uh, creating a snapshot. So once I go ahead and click a snapshot, Notice here, we can just change a description. Let's go ahead and call this one as snap one. Feel free to call it whatever you like. And I can just go ahead and uh, create a snapshot of it. And there we go. Hopefully this isn't going to take much of the time. Okay, let's see the volume. Okay, I need to che check my snapshots in the snapshot tab. And there we go, it's ready, the snap one. Let's see where you are. Snapshot status is still pending. Uh, by the way, you can encrypt all of your snapshots and all these things, that's obvious. Uh, unavailable, 3%, shouldn't take much of the time, it should be rather quick and fast. Hmm, probably I need to pause the video here. Let's pause and wait for it. That was fast. The moment I paused the video, just after a few seconds, it just did that. So now we can see snapshot details. The snapshot is complete and uh, I can just check where it started, the progress, the encryption keys and all these things. Uh, there are a lot of advantage with these snapshots. I can just check mark on this and you have so many options available with this. Uh, the snapshots are actually stored in your uh, S3 buckets. So you can just attach them wherever you like, however you like. Uh, snapshot settings, the storage tier and all these things. If I just go ahead and look for the storage, it's in the standard storage. We'll talk about the, uh, the S3 bucket storage, the standard and the glacier and all of that later on, but this is what it is right now. If I go ahead and click on actions, I can just go ahead and create an image from this snapshot, which is known as AMI. I can copy the snapshot and do a lot of things. I can create a volume from this uh, snapshot again, another volume, EBS volume. Let's go ahead and create an image from the snapshot. Let's go ahead and create this and we're gonna call this one as test one. Come on, test one. Uh, no description, architecture, root device name, uh, hardware. Uh, let's just keep the rest of things exactly same. And uh, let's just create an image. Uh, so this is how you create your first AMI. By the way, AMI is really nice. If you go ahead and click on the AMI catalog, this is where a lot of AMIs are there from a lot of providers like Mac image, Red Hat image. So they have configured it. You'll find some of the servers as well, like Nginx, if you're aware of them. Uh, there's so much more available, Debian and all these. So they are pre-configured stuff, just like they have all of these. Uh, you can just search for them. There is even a marketplace for the AWS. Uh, if you go ahead and look that, there's a Wowza streaming engine. There's a lot of stuff, open VPN, maybe you want to launch your own. VPN service that's available. Let's go ahead and click on AMIs. And there we go, first AMI, we have created that. So all configuration you need to do in your EC2 and then although this is not being asked or not being available, this is my private machine and all these things. Now how should we delete all these things? The step one is to actually select your AMI and make sure in the action, we have to deregister the AMI because it is actually dependent on the EBS, so you cannot just delete your EBS directly. So deregister your AMI. So let's just go ahead and deregister this. Now your AMI is gone, so your EBS is not getting used anywhere, or your snapshot is not rather getting used anywhere. Let's go ahead and click on snapshot. And now we are allowed to actually go ahead and delete this. By the way, there's a lifecycle manager as well. I will not do this. Uh, but you can go ahead and create a custom policy or a default policy of how the backup should be there, uh, backup policies and all of that. We'll not go into too much detail, just giving you an idea that, yeah, this is where it is available. So let's go on to the snapshot. I can just go ahead and remove this snapshot. 
and we'll say delete snapshot we are not going to be using it anymore so snapshot is gone let's go into volumes uh, let's remove the volume that we created so let's go ahead and action and delete the volume we don't need it and finally this one we can just go ahead and create delete it via the instances as soon as the instance will be down it automatically will be taken down instance state and terminate that and terminate that fun stuff and hopefully this will be terminating all of that uh, sometimes it will show you here as well like terminated eventually it goes away so you don't have to worry anything on that so this is it this is all about getting the practicals about uh, the ec2 and aws i know it's super fun and it's super easier theoretical uh, lectures actually give you a lot more behind the scene and in-depth detail about the uh, about the aws the practicals are much more simpler at this stage eventually they get complex and a lot of scenarios can be done but anyways this is the lecture we wanted to go through in the next video, we'll discuss a little bit more theoretical about the S3 buckets and all that. Definitely, we'll explore them as well, but hope you're enjoying this. If you're enjoying them, definitely do let me know in the comment section. I really look forward to uh, see your comments. That's it. Let's catch up in the next one.